Blessings to your friend. I'm Marcus Stevenson, Jr., and I am just delighted you have took this opportunity and this time to allow us to minister into your heart. I want to encourage you to stay tuned in. God has something very special He wants to minister into your life. As always, we don't take this moment for granted. Feel free to call someone, text somebody, maybe yell in the other room and tell them this ministry is on the air. You're special to God and you're special to us. Stay tuned in as you hear and see what God has planned for your life. Mark the fifth chapter, verse 25. And a certain woman, I like how this starts off, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and nothing, I'm sorry, and was nothing battered but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, many of us know this, and oftentimes in our ministry, we don't always preach the most familiar things because God used us to lay foundations as that apostolic anointing is here. But one of the things we have to be careful is that we don't get so deep that we get away from what got us in the pool in the first place. Because you can't get to the deep end unless you first go through the shallow end. And what many people are calling shallow is the very thing we need to go back to. I call it going back to the basics. A lot of people try to get into deeper things of God, but they themselves are not walking in deliverance like they ought to. Here's the woman. The Bible said she had an issue of blood. Now, you can be a man or woman in here, and I don't know what your issue might be. This woman's issue was a blood. But whatever your issue might be, I want you to know and hear me say this directly, that God is here to help resolve your issue. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says she suffered this thing for 12 years. Now, often people preach this and they try to change things when they preach it because often sometimes people don't have understanding. But if the number 12 means government, the meaning of the number 12 haven't changed because we see it here. The number 12 means government. It means dominion. She had this issue so long that this thing be be began to dominate her. And oftentimes we can be bound by a spirit for so long that that spirit begins to dominate us. This is why if you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost and if you're not a spiritual discerning person, oftentimes we run down drunks and we run down drug addicts because we just beat them down because of what they're bound by. But there are so many of those people who really want to be delivered. But it's like that thing got domination over them. It's like that spirit is just controlling them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This woman dealt with this for 12 years. It dominated her life. And my job is not to try to embarrass anybody, but sometimes we can be bound by spirits that's dominating us. Spirits of lust. Everywhere you go, you can't, un you can't even control how you look at people. Spirits of lying and cussing. Even when you ain't got to lie, you find yourself wanting to lie. Spirits of alcoholism. Just find yourself catering to the bottles, to the liquor store. Maybe it was passed down from one father to the son or one mother to the son. Or maybe all the way down from the grandparents. But I want you to hear me and hear me very well. I don't look down on you. I come to tell you today that if you would get a mind frame that you can get in God's presence, God will help resolve whatever that issue might be in your life. I just need about three people to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This woman was dominated by this spirit. And oftentimes we act like we're in control, but when you haven't yielded yourself to God, oftentimes we're out of control. 
and you're acting cool in front of people. But when you lay down at night, oftentimes we're crying out, I hate that I act like this. I hate that I said what I said. I hate that I keep on shooting myself full of this dope and taking these pills I shouldn't be taking. And oftentimes we're crying and we're weeping and we know we need deliverance. I ain't here just to tell you what you need. You know you need to be delivered. I'm just here to tell you it's time to get it today. God has delivered for you. You may come from all walks of life and you may be in all types of bondages and maybe there were all types of stuff uh, but I come to tell you nothing uh, is too hard for the God I serve. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say you're walking out of here free today. The Bible says he had suffered when you are bound by a wicked spirit. I don't care how much you smile, you're suffering. Yeah. Yeah. You're dealing with stuff that's almost unexplainable. And sometimes we hide it from the children and we hide it from other family members. And we don't want nobody else to know that I really don't want to be here no more. If they only knew the suicide I'm fighting, if they only knew this depression I'm going through, if they only knew how I'm hiding drugs in the drussel drawers and how I'm sneaking bottles and when I get to work and trying to goggle some, some scope so you won't smell it on my breath, if they only knew how I'm sneaking around and I find myself bound by pornography and bound by his lustful spirit and sometimes we learn to hide it from people but I come to tell you I don't care how much you hide your suffering God don't want to hide your deliverance today and God told me to tell somebody that today is your day for a miracle you don't have to get a brand new leg you ain't got to get a brand new arm but you won't get another kind of spirit and this spirit going to be a spirit that come to make you free. Somebody shout hallelujah. I didn't say say that. I said shout hallelujah. Give them praise out there. And here's where I get in trouble because I don't want this statement to be misunderstood because God has raised up many rehabilitation centers. God has raised up many good counselors. God has raised up people who have a vision of God to do many programs to help a lot of people who are bound by a lot of things out. But here's a lady, if you read in verse 26 here, it says she had suffered many things of physicians. So here's a woman who tried all the sinners. She tried the steps, the programs. She tried the patches. Hmm, I wish I had some help here. She went to the AA meetings. But these things did not better her. Oftentimes we criticize people when they're bound. And what sometimes we got to be careful as Christian people is that we don't pay attention. But sometimes people are trying to get better. I don't care if you like me or not. It's sad and it's shameful to me that we're supposed to be God's people and we can't even discern that some people don't want to live like that no more. Some people are tired of the stuff they did it with. Some people are just pal and they need deliverance and the problem ain't that they ain't been looking for it. They've just been looking in the wrong places for it. This woman suffered many things of many physicians. And here's where I get in trouble again. Because oftentimes we have heard the secular world talk about our mental health. And yes, that's true. You can look at me and perk up all you want to. I'm going to say what I got to say. Yes, it is a mental health crisis going on. But why do we put more stake and put more faith in the world way than we do in God's way? And don't let nobody tell you you can pray your way through everything. Tell them folks, shut up and go back somewhere. You can pray your way through some stuff. And oftentimes we try to do it the world's way and we wonder why it ain't working for us. They can give you pills. They can give you counseling. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do whatever you think you ought to do. But one thing you ought to be mindful to always do is take it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. She did everything she was supposed to do. She called the 1-800 numbers. 
She said doctors are poor. Here go 12 years of bondage and a woman for 12 years, she tried doctor after doctor. It didn't say the physician, it said physicians. And yet, nothing was better. How many more time you gonna take a medication? How many times you gonna sit up and think? As if that's gonna make it go away. How many times you gonna cut off everybody? As if that's gonna bring your deliverance. Did you throw none at me out dodge and keep talking? It may have did some temporarily. But oftentimes the real problem is that spirit is still lodging inside of you. And here's what we don't preach no more in this generation. We preach sickness is just sickness. But if you look at your Bible very carefully, which people don't look at and read, Jesus called it spirit of infirmities. What was he saying? Yeah, it's manifested through your body, but it's still a spirit. And that spirit can be driven out. By the power of God. Yeah. Often people in church staying sick. And I'm not talking about because you fight the sickness. Because I deal with things every day. But I'm fighting that good fight of faith. But just because I'm fighting it. Don't mean I'm giving in to it. And that's what you got to say. I'm in a war devil. I ain't wrestling against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Well this virus that's going around. Well God is still going around. And when you going to stop letting your mind. Come down to a place of fear and say, uh-uh, devil, I'm going to curl up the loins of my mind and I'm going to think sober again. I'm going to think like God told me to think. He told me to fight the good fight of faith. Now, I'm not trying to change my message. Watch this. Because I feel a tug here. She suffered many things. A many not only that, she spent all. Ever feel like you've been spent out? God, I wish I had some help. Ever feel like you've been spent out? Done everything you can do. Given everything you can give. Tried everything you can try. Woo! Went everywhere you can go. Talk to everybody you can talk to. Oh, come on here, somebody. And out of all the things that you didn't spend, out of all the time you didn't spend, now it seemed like ain't nothing got no better in your life. One thing I found out about this doctoral system and these hospitals, they won't hardly tell you no. Boy, you got insurance? Boy, they'll, they'll keep on making appointments. You get mad at me. And what I've been trying to figure out, why come when I don't have insurance, the price is still the same as it is when I do have insurance? and has been all that she had. Look here. Out of everything she had spent, out of everything she had given, nothing was bettered. Isn't that a miserable feeling? Knowing you've done everything you know to do, and yet you still see the same problem. You didn't talk and talk and talk. You didn't vent it out and vent it out and vent it out. You didn't took, like I said earlier, me-cations and vacations and family-cations and staycations. <laughs> and everything is still the same. Oh, what a miserable feeling when you're looking for change. And you see nothing is not changing. One of the things that I'm bothered about in this generation of preachers is that we don't even preach to casting out of devils no more. And we've seen these foolish people online making jokes about the Holy Ghost and all this ignorant stuff that we don't even take the Holy Ghost as being real no more. And we don't treat the Holy Ghost like it's God. We think it's a joke. And the devil lets you laugh your way right into bondage. You be laughing now. Somebody caught the Holy Ghost like it's a baseball. You don't catch the Holy Ghost. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And oftentimes the church is not filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's why we have all the bondage in the church. When I was growing up, people didn't know as much as we knew. But they knew how to pray and talk to God. And you saw deliverance in the church. You saw people really free. People operating in freedom. It wasn't this beg folks to do this and beg folks to do that. You know why? Because they was free. And oftentimes we can be looking at dope addicts and looking at drug addicts and looking at people who are bound by alcohol. But some of us are bound by depression. I say there are some of you bound by not praising God. Some of us bound by disobedience. You don't even know why you won't obey. You just know you ain't going to obey. It ain't because you're a bad person. It's because you entertain the bad spirit. Some people are bound by bad relationships. You always attract somebody bad. I'm telling you. If you had two choices, you'd know that's a good person. But some of you say, no, I'm going to get him. I can change him. <laughs> Preach, Brother Stevenson. Had an issue of blood and had spent all this shit, nothing was better. But look here, not only did it not change for the good, it changed for the worse. Verse 27 takes another direction though. When she had heard of Jesus, it lets me know before this, she hadn't heard of him. But here regardless of how things didn't get any better, the moment she heard of him. See, what bothers me is sometimes people hear how to get delivered, but they're so stubborn they don't want to be delivered. Are you one of those people today that can say, I'm going to humble myself that the moment I hear of Jesus, that I want to be so free from this thing I'm bound by, that I'm not going to let pride stop me. When I hear of him, when I hear what he'll do, I'm willing to do what it takes so I can let him do it in my life. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind. Now, the press is not exactly like the press we think today, where you see just people with cameras in the media, but the press is still a large group of people. People who were there to look at someone who was honorable or famous or someone who were popular. And here she sees a nice group of people there, and even though it seemed like she's behind everybody else, She's willing and determined in her mind, I'm going to get to where Jesus is at. And here's what's going to help somebody who's listening to me still today. You may seem like you're behind everybody else in the church. May seem like you're the black sheep of your family. May seem like you are nothing and a nobody. But God has not looked down on you because somebody else has looked at you as being the least she made up in her mind, I may be behind the people that's there, but thanks be to God, I can still get to Jesus. And sometimes there's blockages in our mind making us feel like I can't get to him because of what somebody think about me, because of the way people have treated me, because of the neighborhood I come from, because of the way I'm looked at by society. But I come to tell you, you can get to Jesus, and once you get to him, he'll make it all right. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. She came in the press behind. And she touched whoo, his garment. <laughs> she said, if I may touch but his clothes. Notice, she was behind everybody else. But she made up in her mind, I'm going to get so close to him, I'm going to touch him. And this is why sometimes people don't get delivered. Because we sit there like little babies waiting on God to touch us. And God is saying, I don't need to prove to you that I got faith. You need to prove to me that you got faith. God's proved he had faith because he formed you and made you. Because he believed that you would do work for him. Now God's sitting back saying, your turn. 
If you really got faith, show me your faith by your works. Are you listening to me? The woman, she touched his garment. Verse 28. That's how I tell you sometimes you got to talk to yourself. And some of us know that. You've been talking to yourself. It's only when it comes to God, you, I'm crazy. Oh, you weren't crazy when you talk to yourself and everything else? She said. What did the preacher say? No, what did you say about you? What did the book say? No, what did you say? She said. Good God. If I may, wait a minute. Now she's prophesying to herself, brother. Huh? She said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch his clothes. Wait a minute, why his clothes? Let me touch the thing he's covered in. I know he's covered by the blood. I know he's covered with the anointing. I know he's covered with the spirit. I know he's covered with grace and mercy and truth. I know he's covered with wisdom. If I can touch him. God. Look at this. I shall. Wait a minute. Didn't it say I might? He didn't say there's a good chance. She said I shall be. When are you going to be like this woman and encourage yourself? If I could just get to Jesus, I know everything will be all right. Now, some of you sitting there because there's some days and confused folks in here who shouldn't be. They had spirit and rubbed off on you, and you looking dazed and confused. But let me tell you, I ain't talking about touching just a natural Jesus. I'm talking about getting in his presence. How do you get in this presence? By start humbling yourself and crying out to him again. Yeah. Letting go of this pride. You've tried it your way for 12 years, this woman did, and nothing got better. And sometimes we just like this woman. We didn't try this thing for years, on top of years. And sometimes we know ain't nothing else work, but the devil sometimes will plant pride. And we so proud that we don't want to give God a shot. Come on, that's real. Come on. Watch this. The Bible said, she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. That word whole means complete. I don't care how much of a habit you've made of going through life with this thing. I don't care how comfortable you're trying to act while you still carry this thing. Sometimes you know, I'm not complete. My life is missing something. I'm faking happiness when I ain't really happy. I'm faking joy when I ain't got joy. I'm acting like it's all together, but down in the innermost parts of my heart, I know, God, there's something that's still missing here. The Bible said when she touched his clothes, or when she said that she touched his clothes, she knew, I'm going to be complete. And this is the problem in this country, as well as the problem across the world, is that people are trying to have a complete life without being in his presence. This is why our families are messed up, because his presence is not in our homes no more. This is why oftentimes we have a hard time praying for our own children, because it's hard to free somebody else when you're under bondage in your own mind. But I want you to hear me, sir and ma'am. You don't have to leave here the same way you came in Jesus' name. I ain't looking down on you because of what you're going through. There's many of us suffering many things in here. It could be 12 years. It can be 24 years. It may be 40 years for some of you. But your length of time is not no dominating thing to God. God don't care if you suffer from the moment you've been born. God is still saying, if you get in my presence... He's able to do exceedingly far abundantly above. All we can ever ask or think. The devil got you so bound you don't even think you can get free no more. You sitting here right now, I feel that heaviness. Saying as if I hear your butt. Let me tell you like a teacher told me, get your butts out the way. And tell the devil my faith gonna make me whole. 
Hallelujah. That's what God told Abraham. That's what God had to tell Jeremiah. He said, is there anything too hard for me to do? And this is the spirit sometimes that we're on and we're fighting. Because oftentimes we put the limit on God when the limit is really on our faith. Your faith was never supposed to be limited. That's why Jesus said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. If you can not only believe it, but if you'll work towards that thing that you believe. Can y'all say amen now again? Amen. Ooh. If you work towards that thing you believe, then it's going to happen for you. Come on, can y'all say amen now again? Y'all kill somebody without a gun just looking. Come on, say amen in here. Ooh. Lord, have mercy. So you can be here to worry about free and start getting bound. Because your mind going into, well, no one know what I'm dealing with. Why do you think God talking to you? If you knew what it was, you wouldn't think I can get free. Do you know what I did? No, and don't tell me. I'm not nosy. I'm anointed. Can I buy amen? amen. Hallelujah. Woo. I know why the devil fight. He don't like this type of preacher. Because he wants you bound. You can't free nobody else when you bow on yourself. She said, I shall be whole. Watch verse 29. Let me show you how this works so easily when you work it the right way. And straightway. <laughs> the fountain. Of what? The fountain of her blood. Y'all follow me? Was what? Here's a woman who has the issue of blood. A never ending flow of blood coming up. Blood steady flowing. But the moment she exercised her faith, the thing that seemed unstoppable, not only did God stop it, but he dried it up. When it's dried up, that means it's not even there to flow. I want to personally thank you for allowing us to minister into your life. I'm sure something was seen, something was heard, that was a great blessing to you. And I want to encourage you to get this message in its entirety. You can go to the phone and call. You can go to our social media platform. Maybe send us a message. You can even text the number that you see on the screen. We want you to get this message in its entirety. And also, we would love to add you to our prayer list and to our mailing list. This connection is of the Lord. Not only did God connect us just for this one-time program, but I believe this connection should last for the remaining of our God-given life. Thank you so much for your love and support. And I want to encourage you to stay connected to our ministry. God bless you.